Okay, this morning, please uh, turn in your Bible to Isaiah chapter 42. In your pew Bible, it's on page 832. And Lee has the text for us this morning. It's Isaiah 42, 1 through 9. Behold my servant, whom I uphold. My elect one is whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He will not cry out or raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail, nor be discouraged, till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands shall wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness, and will uphold and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people as light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise carved in images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and the new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell, I tell you of them. Let's give God thanks for his words. Thank you, Lord God, that you have uh, spoken. And I pray, dear Father, that these words that you have given to us today uh, will be for our comfort and edification and strengthening and to the praise of the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. I ask it in his name. Amen. I encourage you to keep your Bibles open as we go through this uh, text today. I like the word behold. It's definitely a scripture word, isn't it? It's twice in these verses, so right in the, it's the first word, and it's again down in verse 9. If you take the uh, traditional Christmas passages from Matthew 1 and 2 and Luke 1 and 2, uh, you will find the word behold 16 times. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Behold, the virgin will be with child and bear a son. Behold. Wise men came from the east to Jerusalem. Behold, the star uh, went before them. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Uh, Do you get the sense that the Lord wants us to pay attention to something? He wants us to notice something. Uh, All our lives, our attention is here, there, and everywhere, scattered all over the place. Chores, work, hobbies, or fun things, or you know, maybe on just nothing at all. Maybe you're just bored. Okay, where's my attention? No, it's just anywhere. Behold, sort of grabs you. Look here. See here. The Lord God Himself is putting something in front of you for you to pay attention to and to regard. Right? Something that is worth your while. It's something precious, something important. It's important for you. And I like behold because it's, it's, well, it sounds like God talking. It sounds like an angel talking, you know, more so than simply your parents or your friends saying, hey, you, or look over here. Okay, behold kind of shakes you out of your, uh, your routine, and, and it sounds like it's coming from the sky. Will you let the Lord God have your attention this morning? He has something that you need to know. Behold my servant. Right? He says, I know you have your things, you know you have your concerns, and you have all your, you know, a lot of stuff on your plate, but I want you to look here right now. Turn your eyes. Who is this? Right? The hymn says, uh, who is he in yonder stall? What child is this? My servant, my chosen one, my beloved son, in whom my soul, the soul of God, Delights. Okay, can we stop thinking about ourselves for a few minutes, uh, whether we're good or bad, or whether we're healthy or sick, 
uh, or uh, whether we're lonely or poor or tired or important or generous or busy, whatever we are. Okay, right now I don't want to hear about what makes you special. I don't want to hear about how flawed you are. Okay, God wants you to see somebody else. Will you look? Will you regard him right now? Uh, so verses 1 through 4, and I do hope that you have your Bible open, verses 1 through 4 and then 6 and 7 are about him. Okay, in verses 1 through 4, it's he. Right? God's telling us about his son, his servant. And then in 6 and 7, God is speaking to him, so it says you, okay, but it's about him. Uh, what do we see in these verses? Okay, first, uh, we want to see that there is exactly one special one in whom God delights. There's one chosen one who is all important. I have put my spirit upon him. He is called, chosen, and sent. Now, he is anointed, right? Not anointed with oil. He's anointed with the spirit of God. Okay, chapter 11 of Isaiah says about him that the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Okay, six, verse six right here, uh, God says that he has called this one. Right? I have called you in righteousness. That is to say, it's a manifestation of God's own righteous nature. Okay, Romans says that uh, in the gospel, in the Christ event, the righteousness of God is revealed. Right? It's on display. God is demonstrating his righteousness to the world. In Christ, there is nothing deceptive. There is nothing false. There is nothing unjust in any of the words or deeds uh, of God's servant. Right? I have called you in righteousness, and your mission is a righteous mission. Okay, he says, I have called you, verse 6, I will hold you by the hand, or I will take you by the hand. Uh, that has a very father-son sort of feel, doesn't it? I'm going to hold you by your hand. I will teach you, I will lead you, I will put my words in your mouth, right? my principles, my righteousness. Okay, and we learn about Jesus that he grew in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man, okay, we see the boy Jesus in the temple saying, didn't you know that I had to be about my father's business? Okay, here's the young man with a divine call upon his life. This is my son, my beloved one, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Behold him. Right, that's what it says at the baptism of Jesus. Right, he came up out of the water and behold the Spirit of God alighted on him. It right? descended like a dove and it alighted on him. Okay, uh, Verse 6 says, I will give you. God says to him, I will give you. I will keep you and give you. Right? Keep you, meaning uh, that God was with him all of his days. And no one could touch him until his hour came. Uh, no one could contradict his words. No one could harm him, no one could trap him, no one could uh, successfully tempt him. He was without sin, right? Without blemish, without a stain, he was kept, right? But even though he was kept by God, the time came for him to be given, right? God so loved the world that he gave his son, right? And Romans says he delivered him up for us all. Okay, he delivered him up, he gave him. Uh, you can see there in the second part of verse 6, the second line, how there are two senses in which Christ is a gift from God, how God gave him. Uh, he gave him as a light, and he gave him as a, a ransom, okay, or the way verse 6 has it, as a covenant, okay, as a light, right, uh, Jesus said, I am the light of the world, right, whoever follows me will not abide in darkness, he will not walk in darkness, he'll have the light of light. And God said, I will give you as a light to the nations, to the Gentiles. And you know what Isaiah says elsewhere, upon those living in the land of darkness and the shadow of death, a light has dawned on them. Right? Behold, arise, shine, your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. 
And I want you to think about the people groups of the world and how they, uh, they waste away, pine away, and wallow in, in sin, in crime, in futility, in anger, and sorrow until the light of Christ shines on them, right? And righteousness appears, righteousness shines on them, right? I will give you a light to the Gentiles, to the nations of the world. We thank God for the light of his righteousness, right? Thank God how, how the, the word of Christ has overspread the whole globe. It's reached all the way to us. And we can know God, and we can know the ways of God. I mean, he gave him to us a light. Now, the scripture says he also gave him uh, as an atoning sacrifice for our sins, right? Not just as a light, but as a ransom, right? a payment, uh, a redemption for all our guilt and un- 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 uncleanness, right? I will hear it says, I will give you as a covenant to the people, right? A covenant is the promise of God, a promise, well, sealed with blood, isn't it? Okay, it's a promise that not even our sin can stand in the way of. Right? God himself is going to resolve that difficulty, the problem of our guilt and our sin. He gave his son. Right? He delivered him up for us all. He gave us uh, his, his servant. This is my body. This is my blood. Given. Right? It's given for you. It's shed for you. Take, eat, drink, receive. Right? Because God promised I am going to walk among them and be their God and they'll be my people. But how can that ever be? How can it be? Only because of this one. Right? Behold, my servant, my chosen one in whom is all my delight. I have called him, I have taken him by the hand and I will keep him and give him to be a light, a covenant for the world. Uh, then also, my friends, I want you to see what his works are what his works are. What will this servant do? Verse 1 says that he will bring forth justice. He'll bring forth justice to the Gentiles. And verse 3 says it again. And verse 4 says it again. Don't you think this is something that we ought to pay attention to? Isn't justice the precise thing that's wrong with the world? Isn't that what's missing from the world? Right? The lack of justice is... I, know, I hear you complain. That's what we complain about, right? That's what we fuss about, the lack of justice, right? Wickedness goes undealt with. The robbery, the abuse of power, the lying, the aggression, the warfare. Where do you think you're going to get justice from? Who down here can produce it? Has not literally every human institution ever devised finally failed to produce justice? Right, despite all of the lofty documents and the idealistic talk and the words and the philosophies and the halls of judgment, right, it's just like it says in God's word that he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed. Right, he looked for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. Behold, pay attention, look around, look up from your own doings for a minute and see how badly the world is plagued by uh, the perversion of justice. The Bible says truth stands far off and justice falls down wounded in the street. And people start to think these wrongs will never be righted. There's never going to be correction for this. Everything's sort of permanently uh, spoiled. And when people look at that and they ponder that, they start to fall into despair. Hey, but friends, behold, my servant, my elect one, he will bring forth justice. He will establish justice in the earth. And he won't stop, he won't falter, and he will not fail. It will get done. Right, our men's Sunday school class just had this in Revelation uh, last week. Behold, it is done. There's another behold, a new heavens, a new earth in which righteousness will dwell in which justice will have a home. Is that worth your attention? Can you, can you forget about your other things for a little while? Your jobs, your to-do list, your games, your illnesses, your food, your money situation. Behold, my servant. 
What will he do? What are his works? Verse 7 says he came to open blind eyes. Okay, which, of course, we know from the Gospels, literally, in a few cases. Uh, but what it means is that he came to remove our worst handicap, which is our ignorance of God. Right? Man, in all his knowledge, knows not God. But John says, the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father has made him known to us. Has made him known. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If anyone loves me, he'll keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our home with him. That's the knowledge of God. That's blind eyes opened. And I was blind. Now I see. Behold my servant. Verse 7 also says that he will release those held captive from their prison. You know that Jesus said, if the Son sets you free, you will indeed be free. Right? The devil held us. Our sins held us captive. Right? Our passions and our desires held us tight. Death holds us tight. And you see how people are enslaved by these things. Right? How, how the life is drained out of them. How they're trapped by passions and desires. They're helpless to resist them. The servant of the Lord was sent to liberate us from all of those things. And he does free people from hot passions. He frees us from evil desires. He frees us from hatred. He frees us from wrongdoing. He even frees us from death. Right? Whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Right? Do you believe that, Martha? She said, yes, I believe that you are the Christ. You are the servant. You are the Savior who is to come into the world. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect one in whom is all my delight. And uh, what's he like? What's his manner? What do these verses say about his manner? Okay, well, you've heard what he's like. He's both meek and extremely strong. Right? He's both compassionate and very determined. Right? Verse 2 says, He will not cry out, raise his voice, or cause his voice to be heard in the street. He doesn't quarrel. He doesn't rage. He doesn't riot. He doesn't force. He says, here I am. I offer you the water of life freely. Whoever's thirsty, come to me and drink. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's what he's like. Verse 3 says, a bruised reed. You know what a reed is, like a cattail. A bruised reed he will not break. He won't snap it in half. It's already damaged. He's not going to snap it off. A smoking flax, you know, the wick of a candle or the wick of a lamp. Why is it smoking? Because it's about to go out. He will not snuff it out. He's a wonderful savior. He lifts up the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. He said, I accuse no one. I did not come to judge the world. I came to save the world. So the woman caught in adultery, he said, I don't condemn you. Go and leave your life of sin. The tax collector, God have mercy on me, a sinner, went home justified, Jesus said. Zacchaeus, salvation has come to this house today. This man also is a son of Abraham. Right? He's a healer. He's a savior. Right? There are times, friends, when I know your sense of unworthiness uh, before God, your, your sense of uh, distance from God, your shame okay, it comes upon you to the point where you say, there's, you know, there's no use, there's no hope for it, it's too late. People say that. God says again, behold my servant. He did not come down here to tear you apart, to tear you down, to snuff you out. He came to heal your wound, to nurse that tiny little spark back into flame, right? To coax it back to life, to cure your sickness, to open your prison door and let you out. Okay, chapter 40 says, chapter 40, Behold, the Lord shall come with a strong hand, his arm shall rule, and he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his breast. 
He gently leads those who are with the young. Right? He's mighty and gentle. Now, is this not somebody that you ought to pay attention to? Close attention. Should you not look at him when God Almighty says, Behold, my servant. Okay, where's your attention these days? All over the place. Here, there, and everywhere. And for some of you, it may be everywhere but on him. Look. Listen. I am the Lord, he says. I am is my name. And I will not share my glory with another. This is my son, my beloved son. With him I am well pleased. Who is that in yonder stall? At whose feet the shepherds fall? Tis the Lord, the King of glory. It's the Lord. Oh, wondrous story. At his feet we humbly fall. Crown him, crown him, Lord of all. What child is this laid to rest on Mary's lap? This is Christ the King. Haste to bring him laud. Behold my servant. There's coming a day when you will have no choice but to behold him. For behold, he comes with the clouds and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will cry out because of him. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse and him who rode on it. He was called faithful and true, and with righteousness he judges and makes war, with eyes like a flame of fire, and on his head many crowns. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands shall wait for his law. What's your decision? Where's your attention? Will you do as the Lord God bids you? He has declared it to you in advance. He has said what he will do. Look to me. Be saved, all you ends of the earth. Thanks be to God for his son, his servant. Blessed be your name, Lord God, our Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus Christ. You have accomplished our salvation. We know you are coming to consummate the program of redemption, to save your people, to raise the dead, to take your throne, to be glorified forever and ever. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Our eyes, our eyes hunger to see you, to behold your glory, to be with you. Lord, bless your saints. Strengthen and encourage the weak. Uphold us, Lord, by your mighty right hand until the day comes when Christ shall return and be glorified as he is worthy to be. Thank you, Father, for your love for us. Thank you for your word today. In Christ we pray. Amen.